Hey everyone, John Sofen here with Car- with Cards Chat. I'm joined today by ESPN, longtime ESPN poker commentator and sports writer Norman Chad. Norman, thank you for joining me. How are you? Uh, I've seen better. Seen better days? <laughs> no, everything's fine. <laughs> All right. So Norman, if, if you haven't checked it out, please do so uh, over on Cards Chat. Norman posted an uh, op-ed about the Poker Hall of Fame. He had, some, he had, he had quite a few issues with... Uh, the Poker Hall of Fame and how the voting takes place. I want to talk to him more about that right now. Now, the other day, Norman, I wrote an article. I don't know if you saw it, but I wrote an article on Chris Moneymaker. I, I made the case for Chris as a Poker Hall of Famer. He's not going to get in. I think we both know that. I even asked him. I said, Chris, do you have what, what chances do you give yourself of getting voted in this year? He's, his response, none. So even he doesn't have any optimism. But personally, I believe he's one of the most important figures in poker history, maybe the most important, you could argue. And I know he hasn't had the success on the felt beyond that 2003 main event uh, championship. But as a contributor, as a builder, whatever you want to call it, he's as important to poker as anyone ever. So I'm curious what your thoughts are on Chris Moneymaker's Poker Hall of Fame candidacy. Yeah, he wouldn't make it in as a player, but this is part of uh, the problem with the Poker Hall of Fame. You have other people who would be what we call builders or contributors. Mm -hmm. And if you had a separate category that allowed you to vote for builders and contributors, like tournament directors, like Chris Moneymaker, Chris Moneymaker is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, I agree with you. His contribution, even if he never played a day of poker after winning that main event, and he's played plenty of poker, he's been a great ambassador, but his contributions are... uh, are irreplaceable. So yes, he would be in as a builder or a contributor. Okay. And now you have a, as a media member, you have a vote in the Poker Hall of Fame. And uh, now this year, who are your two picks? Who do you do? You, who do you, you know, do? I haven't made the picks. You know, I go, you it, we picks? have to make the picks in the next uh, week or so. Okay. And I go down and uh, there's always 10 people and mm-hmm. you, can, you can vote for up to three of them. There's a point system. Uh, where you give uh, you distribute ten points among three people, two people, one people, or you can choose nobody in a given year. So, what are you looking for when you vote? What are you looking for in a candidate? Well, I, I try to adhere to the to the criteria criteria they give mm-hmm. you, and uh, you know it's playing at the highest level, uh, mm-hmm. respected by your peers. You have obviously to be over forty, else you wouldn't be on the list. Right. If you're a contributor, they tell you you have to give a you know a, a contribution to the game that is. Uh, significant so i look at those and uh but it's very hard john because in, in poker unlike you know it, you got baseball stats in baseball mm-hmm. you got nfl stats in the pro football hall of fame poker has so many different elements whether it's tournament or cash whether it's live or it's online whether it's various tours it's really hard to determine it and on top of that the the poker hall of fame has always been both world series of poker centric and u.s centric mm-hmm. which is which is unfortunate because there's there's players around the world now over the last generation who deserve consideration. And that's what that's one thing you you mentioned in your op-ed. Now, personally, I would like to see a like a major league baseball style voting whereas now each year two for those who don't know, two play, two players or builders or contributors, they are not they are inducted each year into the Poker Hall of Fame. It's two exactly two every year out of 10 nominees. Now, with with Major League Baseball, if I'm not mistaken, I believe anyone who gets 75% of the vote or above, is that correct? correct. I believe you're a sports writer, correct. you know that. So I feel that's the way poker should do it. If you have 70, 75% of the vote, you should get in whether or not that's two, three, four, five, whatever number of players and contributors it is. What do you, I mean, what do you think about the Major League Baseball style voting at, in, for poker? You have so, the right idea. Because first of all, the, the system they have, the 10-point must system, I can't tell you that is wrought with, with, with problems. Second of all, limiting it to two people per year, we're now having a backlog of people who deserve to get into the Hall of Fame mm-hmm. who may never get into the Hall of Fame because like, if, when Phil Ivey comes along, as he did a couple of years ago, well, he's, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. So of he's, he's going to get all the votes. So this keeps pushing back some of the other people. But you're absolutely correct. Uh, there's no reason that if you don't have three, four, five people in a given year that most of the people think should be in the Hall of Fame, that if you use your system or any variation of your system, where you know there's 50 people voting, and if uh, and you can vote for whoever you want, and if you get 75 percent of those 50 people say you're a Hall of Famer, then you make the Hall of Fame, and that's one way we'd get over this a limit of two per year, which is really going to put us in a, again a huge backlog coming up. Now, what do you think about now? Here's one issue that I know a lot of voters and a lot of poker fans take have. What is your what is your opinion on 
how much consideration you should take into factor character of the player or the contributor. And I say, that, or the per, I should say the perceived character. Like taking Chris Ferguson, for example. Chris Ferguson, statistically, he's a former main event champion. He's one of the best poker players. He's a, he was the WSOP player of the year two years ago. You know, for 20, 30, 20, 25 years, Chris Ferguson's been one of the best tournament poker players and also cash game players in the world, and that's undeniable. But the full tilt scandal obviously has kept him on the sidelines, but he is nominated this year. Now, what is your, what is your take on Chris Ferguson specifically? And also in general, how much should you take into consideration character when determining who should be elected or yeah, should the, be voted in? That, that's a really slippery slope to get on right. that's, in general. Because who decides, who, decide, who, yeah. who determines morals? That's, right? that's, that's, a, that's a terrible right. place to start or finish. Okay. So in general, like if, if again, if others, if other Hall of Fames did that, you know, you know, infamously, Ty Cobb would not be in the Hall of Fame. I don't care. Right. Oh, no, and, he's what, a racist. Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah, not a good bad, guy. You can think of, not yeah, a good basically. guy. So you just take it on his statistics. Similarly, we should be doing the same thing. The only character issue you should be taking a look at is obviously you don't want somebody who, in the Hall who was cheating at Russ poker. Hamilton. Uh, or, or Russ Hamilton, who, who actually perpetrated a scandal. That's just like Pete Rose, if he was betting in baseball, and that's, you're not allowed to bet in baseball. If he did that, that's why he is not in the Hall of Fame. So if Russ Hamilton is responsible for a that absolute poker thing, whatever, yeah. then yeah, you would not put him in the Hall of Fame. That's not a character issue so much as that's essentially a cheating Cheating thing. scandal. Now, as far as Chris goes in particular, the, the, you know, we still don't know all the facts about the full t- t- no. poker thing. Nothing, nothing we know directs us to think that Chris had anything to do with hatching the quote-unquote Ponzi scheme. He might have had negligence as one of the board of directors or whatever he was. Mm-hmm. You know, he might have been ignorant of it. He might have been willfully ignorant of it. But... We don't, we don't know of him doing anything wrong. He might not have handled it well over the last five or ten years. That's, again, a, a judgment decision. But I would not put the full tilt poker scandal as any part of Chris's resume in deciding whether he's a Hall of Famer or not. What about Howard Letterer, then? I know he's not nominated, but do we put him in the same category as Chris Ferguson? Pretty much. I mean, again, again in this category, John, in this, I've always talked about full tilt poker. We, what we do know is not nearly equal to what we don't know. We don't know that much about it. So until we have all the facts there, I do not want to you know, put these people out front and say, look, they're guilty of this and this and this. I don't think they're probably guilty of anything more than, again, you know, negligence uh, as, as owners of the company. And uh, then you should judge them on that. But again, in Chris's case, I don't think that that should uh, have anything to do with his Hall of Fame uh, qualifications. Fair enough. Now, you asked the, uh, the question in your op-ed, if those who are losing players, lifetime losing players, should be even considered for the Hall of Fame, but I mean, how could we even know who is a losing player? I mean, we don't, we don't have their ledger. I mean, we don't know their. No, we ledger. don't. I mean, that's again, that's another. We're just, one I guess, the, we're just guessing. It's a another bit. thorny thing uh, about the Poker Hall of Fame, but I, I think it's a legitimate question if we knew the ledger. Mm-hmm. I mean, poker, you know, obviously there's tournaments, so you want to win championships and bracelets or whatever. But in, in poker, the bottom line is what the bottom line is. If you're a winning poker player or a losing poker player. So if you are actually a losing poker player over your professional career, it's hard to imagine you're a Hall of Famer, and yet I guarantee you that many Hall of Famers are lose, you know, are in the red for their poker. And a lot of people on the list this year, a couple of people on the list this year, are in the red. That's really hard to determine how you consider that, because as you say, there's no way for us to know. Uh, we don't even know in tournaments. You know, we don't keep no. ROI in tournaments. All we, win, all we see is win. All we see is cash. Is we don't yeah. see how many buy-ins, how much they've uh, bought in so for. That's just again one of the reasons the whole system is kind of broken in us is determining who are the best players or who's the player of the year in any given year. Now, um, as a voter, do you give more credence to performance at the WSOP than other events when you're voting on a player? Uh, yes, because it, it is, it's still, I give credence to, to the major tours, like the World Poker Tour, the mm-hmm. European Poker Tour, yeah. and actually in the old style Triple Crown, it's to, to win a title. Yep, one out of each. Those three, yep. And I think that's legitimate. The World Series of Poker is like the Olympics. It's like the National Championship or World Championship. So I do give more credence uh, when we're talking about tournament results to World Series of Poker uh, titles and World Series of Poker performance than I would over anything else out there. But it is the world, it's the World Championship Festival and right. it includes the World Champions. Sort of like the majors in golf, like the Masters and whatnot. Your, exactly. your, your careers are defined by how you perform at the Masters, how you perform at the U.S. Open and in poker, how you perform at the uh, WSOP. Now, also in your op-ed, you had mentioned, you know, there are a lot of, there are a lot of individuals who, you know, they haven't even really been, they haven't been nominated because, you know, only 10 
10 players or contributors that are nominated each year. Now, can you give me a list, a small little list of uh, players or contributors who you feel haven't yet been nominated but are deserving? Well, some have been nominated and then, then, then fall off the or list. Or fallen off, like okay. Like Thor Hansen. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, he was last year. Or a couple of years ago. Or couple Bruno Fatusi. Mm -hmm. uh, John Duffy, who created the European yep. Poker Tour. There's, there's a really, those are three right there. There's a pretty good list of European players or contributors that really are getting the short, the short shift from a short shrift, whatever the word is, hmm. uh, from us on this, and uh, that's what needs. That's one of the things that needs to be addressed. Okay, and now I'm going to go off the little off topic here. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. We've got the main event coming up in two days. We start the main event finally. Um, as we prepare for the main event, get ready for the 50th annual w World Series of Poker main event. Can you give me? Three, your three favorite moments for main event history since you've been covering it in 2003? Wow, that's always tough. And right on the spot here. No, I, I actually get asked you know, different variations of that question. I never can answer it correctly. Uh, the, the, nothing equals uh, money maker, the, the money making yeah, one. It's, just, it's the first one that I did. Yeah, it's the first so, one we had on ESPN. It, as you know, as it turns out, it's, it's a, change, a game changer for the industry. Yes. So that, that, uh, between, that, that, that heads up with him and Sammy, the bluff, and then winning the title. Uh, it's just, when I see it again, I don't see it that often. When I see it again, I always get like a little buzz down my, mm -hmm. my back because it's so exciting to watch. And it's also what got your career started. I mean, you had a career in sports, right? But your career in poker. Oh, without question. I wouldn't have a career in poker uh, without that moment. I don't know what poker you, does after that. Now, um, did, you, did you have any visions? Did you envision announcing poker for very long? Did you, when you... Got the job in two thousand three. No, with ESPN. We were. I thought it was like what we call a one off. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I thought it would be fun to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if anybody would watch it, so I thought we were going to do the seven broadcasts of the main event. And I'd never been to the World Series before. And then we were going to be done with it. Uh, so about when did you figure out this is going to be a long time deal? You're I figured out it was going to be several time. years. When actually, uh, as much as I enjoyed then taping those things, and I looked, I saw how good they were being produced. I said, "Wow, these are really good." But I didn't, I didn't realize it was going to be more than a year until I, they started to air, and the ratings were really good that first year, and they kept climbing each week, which is very rare. Uh, in television, and that's why I realized, wow, they they found they found like a hidden gem here. I guess we'll be doing this for two or three more years. Okay, now number two. So your number two one, number two WSOP main event moment. Number two WSOP. Main Since event you've moment. been covering it, we'll say that. It's in two thousand three. That's tough, huh? Yeah, that's a tough one because yeah, I don't know if I'm just thinking of final tables or I'm thinking of earlier moments in the main event, which have been tremendous. The, you know, the because of his reaction, the Matt Affleck. Moment mm -hmm. that he got beat by Jonathan Duhamel mm -hmm. coming down on day seven with that final card that came out and Matt's body, like all the blood flowed out of his yes. face. And he camera just, following him. You just got to hate it, having the camera follow I, you there. I, I again, I get halls. chills when I watch it. I feel so badly for yes. him. He had gotten really close two years earlier, the year earlier, and it's hard to get close, we thought, at that point. Mm -hmm. He's never going to get that close again. If he wins that pot, he's on the final table. He's probably going to finish in the top three. So that moment always stays with me, and that's because of Matt's just spontaneous reaction to it. Yep. Uh, and I don't know about it. Number three. One. Let's go. Uh, let me think. I'll, I'll steal. I'll take, I'll take your third one. Um, I would go. Wow, that's a tough one. How about. Um, oh, I would actually. You know what? You know what was actually pretty cool? Um, two years ago when uh, Bloomstein, Bloomstein got the uh, deuce on the river to beat Dan Ott, heads up to win, to crack to win the uh, main event I, i'll give that one that was you pretty like that exciting that, that i thought was... that was a pretty exciting moment i don't i mean off the top of my head i'm sure i'm sure when i when i finish this when we fin wrap this up i'm gonna think oh wait hey no i could think of some better ones but uh anyways uh that'll wrap things up i appreciate you thank you for joining me norman and uh for those who haven't checked out his op-ed on the uh, poker hall of fame please do so over at cards chat until next time i'm out <laughs>